I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, great ceiling. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I am well, just on my way to have tea with a good friend of mine. Oh, that's great. That's great. How exciting is that? What part of the world are you in right now? I am in Los Angeles. All right, all right. And which of your talents up to this time is responsible for us connecting? Um, Probably either my coaching or my writing or my podcast hosting. Yes. Yeah, One of those. C, C, C. Yeah, <laughs> or all of them. Yeah, most definitely. I'll do, I'll do the podcast most definitely. That's where I connected with you, um, where you speak of the leap, right? Yes. Yeah, please do tell us about Permission to Leap. Yeah, so I ended up writing this book this year called Permission to Leap. Uh, that is was written to help people commit to like the day one saying yes to their leap and then guiding them through the entire process of what happens after you say yes all the way up until the day when you land on the other side you start implementing a feedback loop and then you start looking at another leap wherein you turn back to the first page of my book and go through it again Interesting. So who did you learn the skills to teach about this leap? Is it something that occurred with you and you took a leap leap as well? I have been taking leaps in my life uh, probably for the last 20 years. Wow. Um, I think the first conscious leap that I remember taking was deciding to change my last name when I was 14 years old. And I had to, you know, not only ask my mom's help, because of course at 14, I couldn't do it on my own, but I had to go in front of like the courthouse and explain to them why I was requesting to change my last name. And then I had to go to all my family members and let them know that it had happened. And I think that was one of the first times when I I consciously like stood up for myself and was like, this is what I want for my life and I'm going to make it happen. Wow. Wow. So why Seely? It's my mom's maiden name. Um, So I was mainly raised by my mom, who's a single, who's a single mom and uh, her parents. So my Seely grandparents. And I just always felt more connected to their side of the family and wanted to be a Seely. That's interesting. At the age of 14. Wow. 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 Yeah. I can imagine the family like, why is she pushing so much? Right. Well, and of <laughs> course, my dad's family still to this day says that it was my mom's fault. And I was like, she, you know, of course, had to like take me to the courthouse because I was 14, but she had nothing to do with it. It was your decision. So it was, it was yeah. 100% my decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I got to listen to the podcast, right? Um, and yeah. And you had... Uh, a good friend on right uh she's i can't remember her name she's a coach right um oh it was your last episode please remind me of her name so i could Who say her my name. last episode um let's see amy she has Burks. a daughter amy books yes. there we go. yeah so yeah it was pretty great stuff like you're doing great stuff there just it was good Thank it was you. really good yeah i really enjoyed it thanks i had another podcast with a with a business partner earlier this year but when we closed that down I decided I wanted to do it on my own, um, which was not something that I thought I would ever do. Yeah. I never thought I had enough to say to do a, a whole podcast on and my own. And your podcast, that was like an hour long podcast. I think you do definitely have enough because even in the ending, <laughs> right, like you, you opened up, right? And you were just having that fun there with um, what were you talking about? I'm um, listening to so many podcasts. Please forgive me. But no worries. You started talking about something that you wanted to do. Oh, it's slipping me. I don't remember. It's It's hard because I record so far in advance. So I did, I think I did 14 episodes. Oh, it's your email. I got it. So it's your email. You were talking about, um, she had her email, boss, I think. Boss oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you was you were going to change yours to BS, I but that wasn't working. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it yeah was I still good. haven't done it yet. I it was fun. It was fun. Keep it up. Keep it yeah. up. I mean, Thanks. given 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 you've encountered what are the challenges that occur when you when you want to do something differently, why will you continue to repeat this skill? Nevertheless, yeah. So what? Yeah, why why will you continue to repeat this skill? Nevertheless, um. For me, it's that I I don't necessarily always see challenges as challenges. You know, of course, like, yeah, there's roadblocks and bumps and things that we go along. But for me, it's about holding on to my vision 
and knowing that at, I'm at I'm at the point right now where I didn't decide to do a podcast. I didn't decide to write this book. They they came to me. And so I've been doing so much work to be in alignment with my soul and with source and with spirit. And I'm kind of at the point where I am just saying yes to what's flowing through me in this moment. And so I don't look at the challenges as challenges. Like, yeah, sometimes they suck and sometimes being a human is really hard. But because I'm gifted these things, I just have this innate trust that however it's supposed to work out, it's going to. Hmm. So. I love that. Definitely with the work, like you're doing the work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me one other thing that you've done. Or oh, before we do that, tell me where people can reach you. Like what's the best place for them to go to? Um, my website is com. I love Facebook. <laughs> Uh, which is also just Bree Seely. I love Instagram, which you can also find me at Bree Seely. <laughs> and uh, I am on Twitter, although it's probably the lowest of my favorite social media platforms. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and again, <laughs> amusing audience, Bree is B R I S E E L E Y Seely. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. Hey, Bree, tell me Thank one you. other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Um meditation and yoga so I guess more than anything just like having a practice is the one thing that's been really consistent for me is um whether it's like I said meditation yoga walking two miles around the lake every morning um journaling coloring whatever it looks like but just really having some good soul time every day how does that make you feel it makes me feel full because the thing that I've realized is that a lot of our society approaches things from a place of emptiness And I can't be of highest service to my clients, to my followers, to my friends, to myself, if I'm operating on empty. Hmm. And so that's kind of my time to just fill me up and Hmm. have, you know, me and my soul just hanging out, being buds, best friends. (laughs) Chillaxing. uh, Yeah, creating some epic shit in the meantime. It's like the the Fresh Prince popped out, you know, chill out, yeah shooting some b-ball outside of the school when a couple of my <laughs> yeah yeah when so, me and my soul were outside of the school <laughs> there we go so <laughs> why would you suggest that someone that's listening uh who may be in that funk if you would do what you've done um i would say that especially having a soul practice is probably the only way you're you'll ever receive clear guidance about what to do with your life and how to get out of that funk and how to operate and live from a place of fullness. Hmm. There um, we go. There we go. And whatever that looks like for you, you know, everyone always says, what does your soul practice look like? And it's like, yeah, I can tell you about it, but it doesn't really matter because it's mine. Like you have to make your own and you have to figure out what works for you. And then you should do that and not just practice what I do because yeah. it might not work for you. Hmm. Amazing audience, we are live with Bree Seely. Do check her out. She is the podcast host of Permission to Leap. Hey, Bree, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Bree, what is your earliest childhood memory? Um, I remember being, so my hometown had this silly, has this silly celebration called Jesse James days. So Jesse James was a, a robber back in the the 1800s and he tried to rob the bank in my hometown and he didn't, he wasn't successful and most of his gang was killed or captured in robbing my hometown. So every year we have this big celebration of my hometown defeating this bank robber and, uh, every year they have like a kitty parade. And I remember being at the parade in my my costume because you had to dress up. And my cousin was pulling me in the little red uh, radio flyer wagon uh, through the parade. And people gave out candy. And yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So how old do you think you were? Um, That is a good question. Maybe three or wow. four, maybe. Why do you think this memory is so clear? I have no idea, but it is the first one that popped up into my mind. (laughs) Wow. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Sure. I love the idea that uh, in... uh, So, okay. So, so Jesse James robbing the bank, definitely a bad thing, right? But I just Mm -hmm. love the idea of 
of looking at how the majority of individuals can celebrate on what someone decides to do and how far that can go and how necessary it is for us, as you stated as well, to do what we desire to do nevertheless. Mm. And that's fascinating that, I mean, you you said this, this silly thing that they did, right? That um, it's the thing you connected to. Now that you are that person, I mean, there are plenty a lot of people that may be like why is she doing that or what's the value in that right but definitely choosing to serve yourself and spend that time with yourself nevertheless just yeah. just 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 investing into brie is pretty fascinating yeah i yeah. like that yeah if we fast forward to when you were 12 what was your favorite song oh goodness where was i when i was 12 <laughs> uh how old where what grade was i in i, I think, think it was around this time right. uh one of my favorite well, I loved the Hanson Mbop song. I'm not going to lie. I was totally uh, a Hanson fan. And we I went to see Hanson at the Mall of America. They performed when I was when I was younger. And then also, uh, No Doubt's Tragic Kingdom album was my, like, other... Yeah. I think I was a little older then, but it was around that time. Yeah, so. that's cool. Well, I love to connect things. And it's just really fascinating that, like, in the role that you are operating in now, like, you need to have no doubts, right? And, you know, that that album is still one of my favorites. Wow. Tragic Kingdom. I mean, it's 20 years old. I just got it on vinyl. Wow. And I, I'm, like, obsessed with that still 20 years later that mm. album is so good it's amazing how it connects right it's just absolutely mm-hmm. amazing all right my friend well hey we've arrived at our destination but before we get off of this time machine there's a small declaration form so it's going to be yes or no possibly a bit more are you ready brie sure brie have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to i not one specific person but multiple yes are you married no do you have children no nope. do you believe in god Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Mm, y- yes, around three hours a week. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight no. or less than? Oh, yeah, I usually do not get to the end of that question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I mean, it, yeah. having a having a business, especially a remote business, you know, I got on my computer this morning at 830 and I just got off. Wow. You know, it's it's five. It's six o'clock here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, you know, but I had to upload my Kindle copy of my book today and get the hard copy pre-ordered. And I mean, there's like so many things that. Yeah, screen time is... Ugh. I did cool. stop sleeping with my cell phone in my bedroom, though, so that's a win. Oh, that's great. Congratulations on that. Like, I Baby sl- steps. I sleep with mine under the pillow, but it's on airplane oh my mode. Gosh. It's on airplane mode. It's on airplane mode. <laughs> I use the alarm. I use the alarm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Brie. After 1,001 conversations in three months in 2016, I came up with a workbook. The name of it is called Yours, Your Own Unique Real Self, and connected to that is Your Own Unique Real Statement. The idea is as you uncover the questions that you build your mission. If you had to share with us Your Own Unique Real Statement, a statement that represents who Brie Seely is, what would you say that is? Um, I am an inspirational woman who supports women around the world to bring their visions to life. Love it. Bree Seely, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? No, I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate the space. And it was so, so great to connect with you. Halfway around the world? Halfway? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a great pleasure. Bree Seely, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.